Of course. Um, it's funny because I do watch a reaction channel and I am not afraid to admit it. There is a reaction channel I watch. His name is Zach. I'm sure a lot of you know him. And I enjoy his videos. Like, I'm, I don't care if they're about me. It's like, whatever. Like, he's the only reaction channel I will watch. But in the recent one, he thought I farted in my video. And I just want to let everyone know. No. I think I may have missed something. Hey, what up, everyone? Michael B. Petty here. I seem to be running out of content. I don't know what to put out. I don't know what kind of videos to put out. I was thinking about maybe doing some torrid hauls, you know? I could always do, you know, 10 or 20 of those. Maybe I can do, um, you know, maybe some mukbangs. You know, I can eat some Burger King or some Taco Bell on camera for some easy views. Um, maybe I can actually start a weight loss program and then end it in 24 hours and that'll stir up some controversy, I think, for my channel. I don't know. Or I could just do a reaction to Amberlynn. Now, I know I'm a little bit late to the game, but I'm actually kind of glad that I've waited a little bit to go forth with doing this video because things have happened and transpired since she has quit Octavia, and I kind of want to include some of that in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take out some clips from her videos, and I'm just going to like give my opinion on what is happening and what I'm seeing. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. So if you're new to my channel or you haven't seen already, I have to eat five of their foods a day and then one lean and green a day which i can explain later in this video this video is going to be my first week on optiva optiva oh, gotta learn how to pronounce it still day one still cannot seem to get the name right we're still it's octavia octavian octavian um octavia it she can't figure out what the name is oh but my starting weight on this, as of today, is 553.4, so I am down like 6.6 .6 this month. So I've opened the first feeling, and I'm gonna eat this and try this on camera. It's the cr Now, I am pretty sure that she's saying feelings instead of feelings, and I'm, I know that she's saying that because I'm sure that to, who, to her, food is feelings. That's her emotion, so I'm not too surprised about that. Okay, y'all, I got all of my feelings. She is definitely saying feelings. Day one, she's already talking about how she is going to have to go out to Becky's sister's house. And Becky and I are going out to her sister's today, so I'm already going to be having temptation staring at me right in the face. So, I am going to be packing four more feelings just in case we get home late. And then if we do get home late, I'll have my lean and green as my last meal, which I- I can only sister speculate as to why it is Amber would not want Becky alone with her family without Amber being present. But we all know if I do that, I can end up getting threatened to be sister sued again. So I'm going to just leave it at that and let you speculate as to why it is you would think that Amber does not want Becky around her family by herself. I don't know why anyone would go and spend $400 on something they've never tried before. Girlfriends spent $400 on granola bars and powders that is crazy you could literally go to walmart costco sam's club any pretty much any kind of grocery store get that same amount of shit for way less and the truth is i've looked into some of Oct octavia stuff it's not much different than anything you can get at a store. It's honestly not that much different. The only thing is that it's, you're paying for the convenience factor of it being shipped to your house, and you're also being paid, for, like, it's like a set program. But if you had, if I mean, if for someone who is busy, for someone who doesn't have the time to really plan out their meals like that, I guess it would make sense. I don't think that that's like the mo the smartest thing to do because the point of like a diet is to be able to like maintain it and work that into your daily life. And being um, reliant on a service to send you a box every month and carrying around, that it's not feasible and it's not something you're going to be able to do long term. So... I personally think it'd be better to like find the techniques and stuff as to what like how you can lose that weight with normal things with normal food instead of having to rely on a service like that which I think is grossly overpriced and I think most people agree with that. We also learn that Pizza Hut is healthy when we're eating healthy, we're eating pizza. So, we just got back from hanging out at Becky's sisters. There was pizza. It looked good, but with this program I noticed that 
I didn't feel as compelled to have a piece because I knew I couldn't. In the past, everything else I've ever done, counting calories or Weight Watchers, I was able to have pizza, even if I was eating healthy. Um, I know that in Amber's mind, because Weight Watchers does allow free food and stuff like that, she thinks that that means that she can have a Snickers bar, or she can have pizza, or she can have all that stuff. And it's true, if you're under your calories, and you want to spend your calories on a Snickers bar, I mean, go for it. If you're under 2,000 calories a day, you're going to fucking lose weight. That's just how it is. Um, is. Is it the healthy way to go about it? Probably not. But that's not what Amber did, right? Amber never really was under calorie. She was always eating like 3,500 calories and then like binging at the end of that. So it was like, I don't understand this concept that she has or this perception of how she diets because we we're very, it's very clear. We we're able to watch her do it. We've seen her do this. We've seen her start out very good during the day and then at night she goes buck wild and like goes to two drive throughs and stuff like that. So I don't know why she's trying to pretend that this has ever worked for her. So we start off day two and you can already tell that she's fucking over it. Hey guys, so ooh, we are on day two, February 2nd. And I just woke up. So I'm having a dark chocolate cherry shake. And I'm going to do a taste test for you guys. She's already... She's gagging at the thought of having to even drink this fucking milkshake. This is why you don't spend $400 on shit. Is because... Especially shit you've never tried because you don't know if you're gonna like it and the truth is food like that is fucking disgusting It's not good. Okay, you're buying a bunch of the shit and it's overpriced shit, too And now you don't even like it and you're not gonna eat it like that's fucking crazy And she goes on this thing about how her binges are now cured So I wanted to give just like a little update on how I'm feeling and Kind of like where my thoughts are today, like I said, it's day two I'm currently just in the spot of, I had my number two feeling maybe less than an hour ago. How I'm feeling is like really good. I haven't had any cravings. I'm not hungry. Like before my feeling number two, I was just like, I'm not even hungry. So yeah, this food and the way I'm eating definitely takes away cravings i know it's only day two and this food does make you feel fuller because it's healthy and it's nutritional and it's low carb but high protein the right amount of fiber you know things like that this is a very drastic difference from how i used to eat this is the be all end all for all binge eating disorders around the world this amberlin has cracked the code everyone all of the, the National um, Eating Disorders of America, all of you guys, y'all had it wrong. All of your all of your data, all of your scientists out there, y'all didn't know what the fuck you're talking about. Octavia is the way to cure all binge eating disorders. I think it's a mixture in her mind of being, trying to be optimistic about it. Um, sometimes you do have to fake it until you make it. But I also think a part of it is because Amber Lynn wanted to be the person who cured her binge eating by herself and she wanted to push that on her audience that she was able to do this by herself she didn't need a therapist she didn't need a doctor to do it so that she was she was gung ho that this is she was going to make this work no matter what and as we learn in day 3 it all came crumbling down but day 5 that's when fat burning is supposed to start and that's when my energy goes whew, right back up so I'm excited for that day. <laughs> okay, you guys, welcome to day three. So it is the end of the night, like way, 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 way at night. And I have a little story time for you guys. So let's get into it. Yesterday, mentally, physically, I felt incredible. I don't think that there is a time that I have done a program or a weight loss journey diet situation where I felt as good as I did and that's just 100% honesty. I was getting into my head 
so bad. Day one, everything that I ate from the program, I liked. I enjoyed all the tastes. I wasn't hungry at all. Day two, I wasn't hungry at all either, but the situation was every single thing I tried as my first three, was it three? Yeah. My first three feelings when I'm supposed to have five a day, they all were disgusting and I'm just being honest. Everyone's taste buds are different. I get it. Um, the first two things I was able to eat and just like not enjoy. The third thing I was literally gagging and that's not an exaggeration like I literally almost puked it was the like chicken soup one I don't know the texture of it it was just I it took every ounce of me to finish that it was just disgusting Ugh! so I was starting to get down and out at that point um at that point I had some friends over we were about to have more people over we were gonna have a bonfire and I was just like is this even worth it? Like, this food sucks. But it really doesn't. The everything I had the day prior was great. And then the two feelings that I had later on yesterday in the day were great. It's just, there are going to be some things I don't like, just like in the real world. And there's going to be some things I love. The good thing about this is, you don't have to eat the ones that you don't like. You can send them back and they'll send you your favorites back to you. So, that's awesome. So we were having a bonfire and everyone was sitting around with their hot dogs and their chips and their this and their that. And I'm just like, can't have any of it. <laughs> like emotionally, I was a wreck. But like physically, I felt so good. My mind and my brain was like, it's like a fog was lifted. It's wild. It's a really wild ride. And it felt really good. But again, I was living in fear and I was trying to find tons of excuses to quit. I'm gonna be honest, I was trying to find every excuse to quit and I found one. So I got to thinking, I was like, how many calories am I eating in a day doing this program? So I logged everything into my fitness pal from day one and day two and it was only about 900 calories. So I got a little freaked out. I, I honestly was freaking out. I'm gonna be real. I know a lot of weight loss patients eat around that amount it's like 900 1200 and then eventually they eat 1500 and that's how it is with this program you start off by eating 900 and then once you get closer to goal you start eating more and they start teaching you how to not eat their feelings but choose healthier meals throughout the day and eventually your calories do rise and get higher and i started getting freaked out I also had a lot of people in my ear telling me, yeah, 900 calories seems too little and all this stuff. And I was just like getting scared. But the thing was, I wasn't hungry at all. I felt satisfied. And every time it was time to eat again, I was like, I wasn't even hungry. And I just felt really, really good. So I messaged my health coach and I told her, I don't think I can do this anymore. I ended up having brown rice that night which you're not allowed to have on program. <laughs> and I had a cup of noodle. So I ended the day at about 1600 calories. So I was like, okay, so I'm gonna stop doing Optavia and I am just going to, you know, eat less and eat healthy. Why am I doing Optavia? Like, this was the worst idea I've ever came up with. Like, I was literally beating myself up. Like, you guys have no idea. All because I was terrified about the amount of calories I was consuming. My coach was super kind and super understanding and she kept pushing me. She was like, you can do this. I know you can. Like, just give it, give it another week. Give it another try. And I wasn't listening to her. I was just like, I really don't think I can do this. And I, I was finding every excuse not to because I'm so just like mental. Like, let's be real. She was giving me ideas and ways to where I could eat around 1,200 to 1,300 calories a day, which is so much better because a person my size, you need to lose weight or you're going to die. So, like, even Dr. Now from um, My 600 Pound Life gives his patients a 1,200 calorie diet in the beginning. And they eat even less after surgery. So, if you're getting the right nutrients and this and that, then, you know, eating low calorie is okay. Especially someone 
you know, my size. So I woke up today and I weighed in at 550.6, so that's a 0.6 weight gain because of the sodium and that's really the only thing I can think of because that cup of noodle, I'm gonna be real, it has a lot of sodium in it because Optavia is very low sodium. So I was retaining a lot of water from deciding to eat that cup of noodle and um, I drank a lot of water and I was holding on to it. It was just like a mess. So I woke up and I was like, okay, I'm not doing Optavia. I'm just gonna do my own thing. I ended up making a really healthy meal and then I just felt binge crazy. Like, I just wanted to binge on everything. So I ended up having pasta. Like, it was a mess. And when I was being super strict on Optavia, I didn't have that urge to binge. I didn't have the cravings. It's wild. It was wild. Like, Optavia really takes that away from you. And I know it was only two days that I was on it, but... <sighs> I feel ashamed that I thought that this program wasn't going to work for me for a minute there because I had so much going on in my head mentally and I was told that this was going to happen. This was part of the detoxing and getting used to eating healthier and I just gave into it and I messed up. But I do have a appointment to talk to her tomorrow at 8 p.m., a set time. So I'm going to be talking to my health coach and figuring out what we think I should do. We need to take a moment in time to really just mem memorialize Octavia and everything that she has tried to do for Amberlynn. It was a long, hard road. It was you. It was an uphill battle from the beginning, girl. But you tried your hardest. You tried your your hardest, and I applaud you for that. You may have only lasted 48 hours, but girl. Props to you, you really stuck it out. It's interesting to me, like, watching this video, I get, you almost get, like, severe whiplash because she's, she's literally talking out of both sides of her mouth and a lot of the topics and stuff that she's talking about. She's saying how her binge eating was cured, but she had to have rice. She's talking about how she has no cravings, but then she had four bowls of brown rice. I don't understand what she's thinking when she's editing these videos. I don't know if she's literally just clipping the end and the beginnings, uh, or the beginning and the ends of, of her segments on her iPhone and then just l uploading it on iMovie and piecing it all together and hitting upload because it would be hard to watch that and not see for yourself that you sound fucking crazy. Like, it's so hard for, I mean, I'm watching it and I'm like, first she's saying she's fine, then she's saying she's not, then she's saying it's been cured and it works and it's wonderful and then it doesn't. I don't understand. I think one of the biggest things that was very interesting to me watching her quitting her Octavia diet, the fact that her friends and her family really don't give a fuck. Now, when I say this, I mean this by saying, was going over to Becky's sister's and they were going to have a bunch of food there. Why did they have to have food there? I don't really know. You know, if you know that your 600 pound person that you love is coming over and they're trying their hardest to lose this weight to save their life, wouldn't you not have that food around? Wouldn't you, or would you say, or would you tell her like, hey, maybe you shouldn't come around because we're going to have a bunch of pizza and a bunch of junk food around and I know you're trying to do this diet right now, so maybe now is not the best time to come over. Also, the friends that came over during the bonfire and they're eating their hot dogs and their chips and stuff like that, they, these people came over to her house and ate that shit at her house. Like, that is so dark and it's okay to say no. It's okay. It, those people don't need to come over. And I mean, I know people are saying, well, oh, she could stay in her room or blah, blah, blah. The truth is that Amber Lynn has no self-control. She has none of the mechanisms in her brain to tell her no when it comes to stuff like this. So to, this is like putting, this is like baiting the waters in the Atlantic Ocean and expecting great whites not to show up or something. Like it's, it's incredibly interesting to me how she claims that these people love her and they care for her and they they hold her so near and dear to her heart she's dying she's literally dying so and she's dying from food so why would you come over and tempt her that doesn't make any sense to me and also why go over somewhere where it's tempting and i mean i know she said this when she first opened the box she was already talking about going out to eat it's really heavy so first thing i have is the dining out guide order healthy and think healthy this is if i honestly truly have to eat out 
it shows you exactly what I can have at a lot of restaurants, not all right. And I already knew that that was a red flag because most people when they start going, when they start trying to lose weight or weight loss surgery patients, one of the first things they tell you is don't go out to eat. Just don't do it for months, like three months, don't even just, don't even try to go out to eat because it's not helpful. Um, you're put in really hard situations that you haven't been, you're not ready for, and your chances of failure are extremely high. They're very high. You're more, li you're more likely to fail in that scenario than to succeed. I've had friends that I had before I've lost weight and I'm still losing weight. They're friends that I don't really talk to anymore because um, I realized that our relationships kind of just kind of revolved around food. Like if we weren't going out to eat or we weren't going to this party or da 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 da, then I we we weren't hanging out. And as soon as I stopped saying like, nah, I don't really want to go to the bar. I don't really want to go here. I don't want to go there because there's just nothing but bad food there. I then our relationship slowly started to drift off, and that's perfectly normal. Things like that happen. Um, if you go to weight loss support groups and stuff like that with people who are losing weight, that's a very common thing for people to say that their relationships are changed or friendships die off because once you take food out of the equation, you realize that you didn't really have that much in common with that person other than you guys both like to overeat. If some, if one person is still in that mindset and they still want to do that and you're not and you're steadfast in your, in your belief that you're trying to lose this weight, there's nothing really for you to do and yes, it's sad, but it's just a, it's a fact of life. That's just how it is. And you also learn about the people who do care about you who do want to hang out with you you hear, you get you have your friends that are like oh you're trying to lose weight let's go to the park and walk around or let's go to let's go on a hike or we're gonna go and try like this fresh organic juice bar or we're gonna go you know and they do make that concerted effort because they know that you're putting forth effort too and they want to see you succeed and those are the people that you want to you want to realize in your life you want to realize that those people are are there for you and those are the people that are actually there for you the people that come over when you're 600 pounds making hot dogs and eating chips in front of you they're not your true friends because if if they knew how desperate you were to save your life they wouldn't do it they just wouldn't do it that's just that's just plain and simple but if they come over anyway and they're still doing it anyway boo they don't like you they're really not on your side they're not on your team and that's just what it is i'd also like to point out that when she quit her diet, she posted that unboxing the same day. She's on her YouTube channel promoting this diet, knowing that she had already full-on failed. That is so manipulative. That is so shady. The truth is that I don't watch Amberlynn for inspiration, but I do know that there are some people that watch her for inspiration because they leave hate comments on my channel. So I know that they do exist out there. So, but... I think it's very interesting to me that she thinks it's okay for her to still come on here and promote something that she's failing at. And she even does it in the video. She's in the video where she's failing. She's like, it's a great diet. It works. Da, 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 da. I couldn't do it. I wasn't able to do it. Um, it stopped my binging, but I still binge. Which is it? It's either black or white. It's not both. Either the program's working and you're cured and you don't have any cravings and you're not hungry at all, or you're you're ravenous and you're eating everything in sight. It's it, you can't have it both ways. But to still promote it and pretend that like for someone like you that this is what's working, and the truth is that there are people like you who watch your channel. So I know that there are people out there that watch it and are like, oh, maybe this could work for me. So for you to come on here and still promote this diet, and even though it's com it's clearly failed for you, is a disservice to your audience and a disservice to your supporters. Not to your haters. Your haters don't care either way if you succeed or fail. But to you, your supporters, it's a huge disservice because you lose any kind of goodwill or any kind of trust that you had. Not that you had a ton to begin with, but you're just squashing that trust even more. So I don't know why you would do that or why you would put yourself into that position. She also goes on talking about how the calories were too low, eating 800 to 1000 calories a day was far too low for her. Um, for someone her size, it's not something that is feasible for her. A few days ago, I have officially decided not to do Optavia. I have decided this through talking with my health coach, with my girlfriend, with tons of people who are close to me. I thought 800 to 900 calories is not sustainable for someone my weight. And if I was to ever try eating more than that, I would gain weight. It would mess up with my it would mess up my metabolism and I just don't think I'm ready for that low of calorie. 
My doctor was totally fine with this program. I did talk to her about it. She was totally fine with it until I told her how many calories I would be eating. And then she told me that's just not a good idea. From a doctor's standpoint, she told me just it's just too low of calorie for you or for anybody to sustain in their life. It took me days to decide on this and I just figured I'd let you guys know because this whole video is the ups and the downs of this crazy thing we call a weight loss. Um, the truth is that she's just talking out of her ass at this point. Remember, she did hours and hours of research and she came on here defending this diet and saying it was so healthy. Do a video before I start this new program, which I am so excited for. I have done extensive research on this program and everything I've read about it has been amazing. Every person who has done it has nothing but good things to say about it. And it was so right for her. That to me proves that she did none of the research. This is, she was literally regurgitating every single thing that this health coach was telling to her. She had no intentions of actually looking in depth into seeing if this was the right program for her. I also have an issue saying program because to me it sounds very similar to Scientology. On program, off program. Like you're either trying or you're not. Like I don't really like the whole on program thing. Like I feel like Leah Remney needs to come and like we need to do like a whole series about the people who have been slated by Octavia. Like I'm pretty sure that pretty soon I'm going to get a letter in the mail saying that like I'm a suppressive person and all like I, I'm pretty sure that I am on Octavia's suppressive person shit list like that's how it feels hearing them talk about this and this has been a common thing that I've heard in other YouTube videos of people who are doing Octavia it's on program they use these this terminology that's very weird to me and I've never really heard it before on program off program fuelings that it's so it, the lingo is fucking weird and I really don't like it and it gives me like goosebumps it gives me like the straight up like it, i'm bone chilled from it like it fucking it eerie it makes me it's very it reminds me of cults and i don't like it i don't know why that could just be a personal thing but that's just how i feel about it but yeah she talks about calories were too low blah 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 but then in the same breath she literally says that it's okay to do a low calorie diet as long as you're getting the right nutrients that's true when weight loss surgery patients go on diets typically our surgeons have us go on a low calorie diet supplemented by vitamins real vitamins not vitamins i mean um, vitamins and bars are real but we're talking about like over the top like heavy duty vitamins it's true you can go on a low calorie diet and supplement with a lot of vitamins and stuff and you're going to be okay and you're going to still lose weight you just have to make sure you're getting enough protein every day so you're not losing a ton of uh, muscle you get put on these diets one because the surgeon wants to prove to him that you can lose the weight and that you'll be able to stick to something and two they want you to shrink your liver so when she's talking about how doctor now puts these clients on these diets yes it's true it works for overweight patients and there have been people on that show who have gone on the diet stuck to the diet lost the weight and never got the surgery because they figured for some reason it clicked in their head and they were able to stay on the diet and lose the weight and bravo to them kudos to them i think that that's awesome but for some people you have to get the tool and that's just what it is but she's talking about it as if she says it's too low of di too low calorie for her it, it wouldn't work for her um but if you get the right nutrients it'll work but also in her video where she literally did her ad for octavia she's talking about these people who have lost massive amounts of weight so and so lost 100 pounds in a year so and so lost 150 pounds in a year you guys ready for it there is a program called octavia that thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people do. So this is not, none of these people that I am telling you right now are any of the people who messaged me about this. So I don't want people to start going harassing people. But I just wanna give you guys examples so you guys can go look of people who are doing the program Octavia and then I'm just gonna explain it a little bit, just a little bit because I will be making more videos about this and having you guys follow my journey. I am so excited. I just, I have, I have no words. I'm also very nervous. So on Instagram, you can follow Transforming Noel. Her highest weight was 414 pounds and her current weight is 180. Take a minute, take a minute, let that absorb amazing i know and she has done it from this program i'm sure a lot of people know who this is but miss itty britty she has lost 336 pounds on this program she has lost 
336 pounds, 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 she's proud, pounds, proud, pounds. That is a lot of weight, you guys. I am, ugh, and it took her two years. What? On YouTube, there's a girl called Mallory in the making. I watched like all of her videos. I was doing so much research and she was one of the people that I was just like, oh my God, tell me everything. She has lost almost a hundred pounds and I think it's been like less than a year. What? Those people are fat as fuck. Those people needed to lose weight. Those people are no different than you are, Amberlynn. You're not a special fat person. You're not the well, you're not the fat person that can only eat 3,000 calories a day or you'll starve to death. The truth is that if you ate the diet, you would have lost the weight. But you didn't want to. You don't want to lose the weight. I strongly believe that Amberlynn doesn't want to lose the weight. And I'll get into that later. But she was trying to find a way to get out of this diet. So now, the way she's going to get out of this diet is by blaming the doctor. She's going to blame the person that was actually trying to help her. That would have helped her at a way, way more cost effective. I actually, I don't know if that would have been cost effective. Because Amberlynn refused to get health insurance. And I am over people on her channel telling her to go get health insurance. It's too late. The enrollment, the open enrollment period is over. She can't get health insurance anymore. She's done. She's not a special case. She's going to have to wait until December to for the open enrollment period to, to start again. That's how it works now. So people need to stop being like, you should get health insurance. It's too late now, okay? She waited too long. She was too lazy. She wasn't smart enough to figure it out. So now she can't get health insurance, okay? So people, please stop saying that. Second of all, it still would probably be more effective and more cost effective for her to just see a doctor and to have done what her doctor wanted her to do. But she didn't want to do that. She wanted to do this thing because Amberlynn is much more into the glamorization of the weight loss community than the actual work that it takes for the weight loss community. She wants to have all the accolades without doing any of the work. So now she's going to use the doctor's advice as a means to quit the diet. You know, I'm she didn't talk about how she went in and saw the doctor, first of all. She hasn't talked about the leg thing in who knows how long now. She emailed her doctor through the health portal or whatever, and now the doctor, and she was like, oh, I'm on this diet that's like 700 calories a day, and the doctor was like, that's really low. Like, that's pretty fucking low. That's not sustainable, blah, blah, blah. You need to be, like, under a medical supervision or you need to do something like that, but now it's just an excuse for her to not do the diet. In her next video, she actually talks about how it's the audience's fault why she has lost not why she's not on the diet brings me to this whole thing about Optavia everyone like I like I'm literally talking probably 98% of my subscribers did not want me doing Optavia like no one wanted me doing Optavia like I was getting so much hate for it for different reasons people thought it was junk food people didn't like that it was MLM company people just didn't like several different things about it. They thought it was a scam or they didn't think it'd work for me or it was too little bit of food or it was the wrong type of food. Like there was just so many different reasons, but literally no one wanted me to do this. There was a handful of people who were rooting for me and I appreciate those people so much because it's like, you guys always got my back and I just like love that so much. But then there was like this huge amount of people who were just like, no, 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 this is ridiculous. Like they wanted me not to do it. And they weren't rooting for me. They were literally saying, you're going to fail and you suck pretty much. So like when I came back and I was just like, you know, you're right. Optavia is not right for me. I got so much hate. I got so much hate for it. And I'm just like confused because I'm literally stopping something that you didn't want me to do. I got so much hate, so much. I just, I feel like this might be one of the worst video, like thumbs up and thumbs down I've ever received. Like I don't pay much attention to that, but I was just like so shook by it that I kept checking it like on the daily. On the video where I said that I'm not doing Optavia no more, I got a little over 1400 thumbs up. Over 12,000 thumbs down and I'm just like, what? Like so many people, 98% of the people didn't want me doing this program. And then all of a sudden now everyone wants me to do it. I guess I was just confused and I know a lot of people are going to come at me and say, no, we're mad that you failed. But I failed at doing something you didn't want me to do. So when I 
failed at it, I thought people were gonna be like, okay, good. She goes on about how she feels that we came and um, the audience was telling her that she shouldn't be doing it. Now that, that she's not doing it, we're all pissed at her. Girl, lose the weight, don't lose the weight, do whatever you want, but to sit here and blame every Joe Schmo for why you can't lose weight is stupid because you've been fat your whole fucking life and you've only gotten more fat since you've been on YouTube. So for you to sit here and pretend that it's YouTube's fault, it's your audience's fault, it's stupid. It's your fault. You, ref you If you had stuck to Octavia, you would have lost the weight. That's why those people lost 150 pounds because they, they stuck to it the whole time and they seem fine. So if they were able to do it, why couldn't you do it? It's because you didn't want to do it. Not because you were afraid of not getting enough calories in because whatever weird thing in your mind you had thought up or you invented in your brain as to why this wasn't going to work out for you. You just didn't want to do it. Own up to it. Say you didn't want to do it anymore. I think people would be way more, had way more respect for something like that than for you to get on here and blame your doctor and then to blame your friends and then to blame um, the audience as to why you can't follow through with a diet. Why have you quit every other single diet in your life? Like that doesn't make any fucking sense. You just didn't want to do it. Now, and also you were so resistant to what people were saying about Octavia. You were so, how, you were, you were, you were, you weren't even, you were more than resistant. You were offended that people would even go on to criticize and critique Opti Optivia to you. But now, now, but now you heed our advice? Now, now the audience is right? It makes no sense to me. Like I, it's, in my brain, the way that I see it, I'm not a professional in any way. She was looking for an out, she found her out. She wants to take zero accountability for anything in her life and she will do whatever it takes to keep her at the state she's in. Blaming her audience and blaming the doctor and blaming all these people, it just absolves her of all accountability. And in order to lose weight, you have to be accountable for your action. Now, I want to talk about the obese to beast thing. Okay. Oh, my God. I don't know much about him. I remember reading an article about him, like, maybe a couple years ago. Like, when he was first losing, when he first lost the weight or something like that. I feel like I read an article about him somewhere. Maybe it was on Reddit. I'm not sure where it was. He seems like a genuinely nice person. I do think that he does know what it takes to lose weight. And I do think that he has techniques and tips on how to do it and how to be successful at it. And I would never take that away from him. I think that he, he does know what he's doing. Part that I'm trying, I'm having issues with understanding the way they're going about it. He addresses her in a public video for everyone to see. He even mentions her being admirable. And I'm like, do you know who you're talking about? Like this woman literally, like this woman went on here and publicly falsely accused someone of raping her. Like that, this isn't like the, this isn't a d normal person. Okay, like this is a special case. And I think that he, is equipped to help people to a certain extent. I think someone like Amberlynn is not that. I think that someone like Amberlynn needs an inpatient process or she needs a team of people around her that will hold her accountable all the time. She needs a th she needs a cognitive behavioral therapist, she needs a real doctor, she needs a real dietitian. She needs all of these people communicating with each other about what's going on in order to, for her to be successful at finally losing the weight. I don't think some dude on YouTube messaging her over Instagram and Twitter is going to help. And in fact, I think by doing this, you're only incentivizing her to... Because there's one thing that Amberlynn loves maybe just as much as food. It's attention. She fucking thrives off of it. Okay? And... I think that by doing this, you're just feeding into that narcissistic mindset that she has where it's all about her. I mean, God, I mean, she commented on the guy's Instagram post where he's memorializing someone that passed away, like a friend of his. And she's like, hey, um, read your messages. It's me, Amber Lynn. Like, she has no kind of social decorum whatsoever. Like, it's fucking crazy. I mean, she likes to call me immoral, but goddamn, like, that's fucking, you are super fucking ignorant, okay? Because um, she could have easily just messaged him but I think that we need to like really get to the like she's gained a lot of weight on YouTube over the past two years and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that she's incentivized to gain weight now right she's incentivized to eat on camera this is her living so by doing all of this in a public sphere like turning this into like a thing I don't think it helps anything I don't think that it actually gets to the root of the problem I think if anything it exacerbates it and so I think that you have to be very careful with that. I think that there are people who are far more deserving of obese to beast time. So I think that there are people that he could be more successful with. I'm not saying that he couldn't help her. I'm just saying that Amberlynn needs more help than he may be able to give her. 
okay? Because she's in such a state that it's scary. Like, it's, it's do or die right now, and she's not, it's, the light bulb's not clicking. And I think that when Amberlynn saw you reach out to her, her mind instantly didn't go to, I'm here to lose weight. It went to, I'm here for the views. So that's just my viewpoint on that. It may be wrong, but that's just my opinion on it. Um, I'm gonna cut it off here. This video is already insanely long. Um, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down below. If you think that um, all this Octa about all this Octavia stuff, what you think about obese to beast, all of that stuff, I want to know. Let me know down below, and I'll answer your comments. Until next time, toodles.